With so much goodwill swirling around this time of year, we put the word out that we wanted to hear about your favorite things. The idea took off, and in this week's show, we're highlighting some of your faves and raves. Our first stop is a tasty one. In Full Heart, we're sampling a local restaurant to find out what keeps people coming back for more. You need to have that engage with the customers. I know what you guys did last, last year vacation. I know what, you, what was your last meal in here. Then in Flight of Fancy, a passion for butterflies inspires a Naples man to color the town. Plus, people around the country consider gaming a favorite pastime. In game time, we're breaking down top gifts for the techies on your list. I'm Amy Osher. We'll have those stories along with a preview of what you'll find in this week's Daily News. I'm Amy Osher. Thanks for joining us. So many of our best memories are tied to delicious food. Maybe the meal, maybe the company, or both. It's no surprise the first of our favorite things is a restaurant that leaves its customers with a full heart. There's hardly an event in Lee County where Mark Collins isn't on the guest list. With a smooth as butter southern draw, he makes even new acquaintances feel like old friends. I'm from a very small community that takes care of each other, so my heart is community. Bringing people together is his thing and the inspiration for a monthly meetup. Yes, lunch with friends. That started so innocently because there are tons of people you see all the time that say, oh, let's get together, let's have lunch, and you never do it. So we started over a year ago and said, let's meet the same place, the same time, whoever wants to come. And so we're up over 60 people. More often than not, the friends end up here. Gloria's La Trattoria Cafe Napoli, a South Fort Myers favorite and one of Mark's favorite things. Why is it one of my favorite things? I love it because we go there for celebrations. We go there if we're sad, you go there if you're happy. The food is unbelievable. Um, there's always good wine. But the attitude of love, acceptance, um, community, it's always there. Chef owner Gloria Jordan turned a small space in a nondescript shopping center into a big success. People said, oh, restaurant business is the hardest business. That's not true. It's hard if you go big. This is a small restaurant. I start next door when only 20 seats. With impeccable dishes like her popular paella, Gloria's food is first rate, but the atmosphere takes it into the stratosphere. People always like this place because I always said, if this remind me grandma house, it remind me my own house when I have friends coming over. <laughs> As you see, everybody know everybody. <laughs> Born in Cuba, Gloria moved to Spain and went to culinary school in Sweden before arriving here. Her food reflects a European influence, but what brings people back is Gloria. When she comes in the room, it immediately changes. You can go there with 50 people, although it's going to be cramped if you go with 50, <laughs> or by yourself and everybody's just, is family. One measure of success is the people you touch. That's why learning La Trattoria was someone's favorite thing touched Gloria's heart. I was just like, a little emotional. Bringing people together over a fine meal is the most satisfying to Gloria. I came here without no family and now I create a family. I have my best friend right now. I met her in this restaurant. Getting flowers is a favorite thing for many of us, but to a Naples man, they're the means to an end. He's an expert at planting gardens to attract fancy visitors. Look at this is an abutilon. Oh, so there are this some. is a new plant as of about a year ago and I had this last Christmas in a pot and everybody thought I decorated it for Christmas because of the flowers. To step into Mike Malloy's garden is to see nature in all its splendor. Blooms in every color, shape and size. This is Filipino violet. I mean, there's so many, but a tangle of tropical flowers. He cultivates them carefully, each one here by design. So all these beautiful plants and most of them are, are chosen by their ability to attract butterflies? Absolutely, a absolutely. Do you, there, I don't think there's a flower in Florida that butterflies don't like. 
Mike wrote us that butterflies are his favorite things. A former landscaper, his passion was a natural progression. You plant the right plant, the right butterfly comes. They all have one plant they love. And uh, we started doing this 20, I don't know, maybe 30 years ago. And uh, it just becomes addicting. A beautiful obsession, really, taking up most of his time and energy. It's insane uh, that I spent $5,000 on milkweed one year just to feed the monarchs. A self-described 60s guy, this butterfly lover is as colorful as the insects he adores. And I found the butterflies were a lot easier to get along with because they didn't talk back. <laughs> but uh, no, they're just the most beautiful thing. They seem to like him too, or the paradise he created. In our short visit, we saw several butterflies flitting about his garden, feasting on nectar, even horsing around. So, <laughs> do you go on excursions All to see butterflies? All the time. We go. We're through the Everglades twice, twice a week. When he's not looking for butterflies, Mike writes about them. When they die, he turns them into art, uplifted and inspired just having them here. People take life too seriously, you know? When we come back, family, friends, a robot vacuum cleaner, more of your favorite things after the break. Stay with us. My name is Steve Unser and cabinetry is my specialty. I have been creating custom designed cabinetry for 20 years in Southwest Florida. And now I'm celebrating the grand opening of our new Naples showroom. Steve Unser Cabinetry will help you design your kitchen, bath, or home office with stunning results. Offering the best quality of cabinets with a wide variety of design options and pricing to fit any budget. If your kitchen isn't becoming to you, you should be coming to us. Now, two locations to serve you. Hiring the right moving company is important. Best Moving and Storage is a family-owned and operated business serving Southwest Florida for over 22 years. From our free in-home estimate until the last piece of furniture is in your new place or stored in our climate-controlled warehouse, we treat you like family. Best Moving and Storage is fully licensed and insured with all of our employees being certified drivers and packers. When it comes to protecting your treasured belongings, choose a company that's experienced and trustworthy. Call Best Moving and Storage today at 239-592-6565. Let AAA Travel help you plan a memorable getaway with unique vacations featuring authentic experiences worldwide. Expert AAA Travel consultants can show you the hidden gems. Plus, AAA members enjoy valuable savings and exclusive benefits on cruises, land vacations, hotels, rental cars, and more. Whether you want to tour Europe, cruise Alaska, or just relax in the Caribbean, AAA Travel can help you get there. Expect something more with your next vacation. Get started today. Visit AAA.com slash Naples or call 594-5006. Now picking up where we left off, here's more of your favorite things. Raindrops on roses and blue satin sashes sound good in verse, but in real life, people are singing a different tune. Considering we went online to social media asking you for your favorite things, it shouldn't come as a shock many of you mentioned your tech gadgets. Karen Holly wrote her iPad along with loved ones. Andrea Lyon listed her iPhone, camera, and laptop in that order. Natalie Roten is hooked on her tablet. Kurt Larson included Apple devices and his beloved bike. The robot vacuum Roomba got the thumbs up from Julie Down and Teresa Tyson. Sharon Lonsdale sent us a snap of her automatic cat feeder. NBC2 anchor Kelly Burns counted her hairstylist Vinnie Hutt among her favorite things. My fave hairstylist Amy Handy listed her favorite candles. She might be getting one from me. Shh. Jada Fleming favors tea and Nike. She works out a lot. Denise Cobb wrote Uber and her hubby. She travels a lot. Lynn Groth wrote she can't live without her Tesla. What? Kat Velez has simpler tastes, chocolate, wine, and shoes. Jenna Satterfield is holding on to her lifelong friend, her stuffed frog, Crokey. Family figured into many of our favorite things. Sandra Cassetta says she loves fine gel pens. I noticed she typed that into Facebook. Evelyn Posonsky loves her radio. Bob Walters mentioned sunsets, spring training, and watching his former students. I'm one of them. Thanks, Coach. Favorited by Susie Mert, Sypha Water from Publix, and a breathing app that gives her balance. She has two girls. 
Flip-flops are among ABC7 anchor Krista Fogelsong's favorite things, especially if they're blingy. Finally, all of you watching are among my favorite things, for real. If you ask a child to pick their favorite thing, there's a good chance they'll say a bicycle. Well, a local man is doing his best to help more kids get on the road. Ashley Collins has the story as we take a look on the beat. Ashley. Thanks, Amy. I'm Ashley Collins. I'm a reporter with the Collier Citizen. This past week, I worked on another story for our series called Hashtag Southwest Florida Strong, where we focus on people in the community making a positive difference. I got to interview Ann and Tom Petsiga. Um, they're a Naples couple who have hosted a Christmas party and toy drive every year for the past 10 years. And basically, they've donated bikes uh, toys and checks in order to benefit the kids in Collier County. You can check out the story at our uh, community publications of Marco Eagle, the Collier Citizen, the banner, and also at NaplesNews.com. Hi, I'm Greg Stanley at the Naples Daily News, and uh, this week we're going to take a look at the development of uh, the East Trail on uh, US 41, pretty much all the way from uh, the Naples city border um, on out into the boondocks. Uh, the county commission is really taking a look at what it wants in those areas. There's a lot of tired strip malls and, and, and vacancies that they're trying to get rid of. Uh, bad news came this week when a Sam's Club pulled out a big box store that was set to open up and anchor one of those malls. Now the commission has to decide what it wants and, and can try to find in place of those. So pretty much they've put a ban on new gas stations, on storage units, and um, a few other uses that they don't want there as they try to encourage uh, uh, more vibrant redevelopment. Goes without saying, a favorite sport in Southwest Florida is golf, and we put in hour after hour trying to get more out of our games. As a gift to you, we brought in local teaching pro Jim Suddy with tips to get you in top shape. Hi, I'm Greg Hardwig, the sports editor of the Naples Daily News. We're out here at beautiful Twin Eagles Golf and Country Club in Naples, home of the PGA Tour Champions event, the Chubb Classic and we're at Dr. Jim Studies Golf Academy here at Twin Eagles. Doc Study writes a golf column for us every couple of weeks and also is a top 100 golf magazine instructor and top 20 by Golf Digest. Uh, Doc, one of the things that uh, people really need to do is save some shots around the green and uh, let's show them how to hit a pitch shot okay. and get the ball close or yeah. maybe you got a better shot at fewer putts. I agree, Greg. Couldn't be uh, farther, uh, closer to the truth than that. Um, <clears throat> the the pitch shot, the standard pitch shot, is probably your most important option. Instead of getting fancy, whether we're just going to teach you to hit a, a shot, just a normal shot, uh, a normal pitch shot. And I have my uh, assistant Eric coming in to <clears throat> demonstrate that. So Eric, first thing here, let's talk about the club you selected. He's got a <clears throat> 60 degree loft. I would say if you're just a, a 15 to a 12, 10 handicap, just use your pitching wedge or uh, your sand wedge. Uh, the better players use higher lofted clubs because they have a lot of bounce on them, right? That's bounce right there. So <clears throat> pitch shot, go ahead and uh, address it. First thing we want to do is talk about the errors for a pitch shot. What I typically see is people using their hands too much in a pitch shot. So uh, go ahead and hit this and hit behind it and show me how um, you'd see a typical amateur hit this. So he tried to scoop that ball with his hands, you see. So when you scoop a ball up with your hands, what you're doing is you're gonna hit back here or you're gonna hit it on the upswing. That scooping feel that stuff is going to make you hit behind the ball. So go ahead and hit another ball. Let me get a ball for you here. There you go. Here's a ball. So we got to start with his weight kind of on the left side, 60, 40 left with a narrow stance. And you can see where his hands are. He's going to keep his weight 60, 40 left. He's not going to move to the right that much, but he will turn his shoulders and he will set his wrist a little bit on the backswing. Not a lot, but a little bit. What is very uh, important here is you can see how he hit down on the ball. He didn't hit up on the ball. Weight left, hands slightly forward, and he's hitting a divot every time, and it's like a <clears throat> 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock swing. There's a little bit of wrist cock on the backswing, then it's all turning of the body on the downswing.
One more. Keep it simple though, don't try to make this a hard shot, but you don't want to scoop it and stay on your back leg. You can watch his lower body action very closely and how he turns through it. That one he scooped a little bit and as a result he hit a bad one. So <clears throat> on the pitch shot, remember 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, turn your body through it and keep it really simple. Don't use your wrist a lot. You want to use your wrist a little on the back swing and then turn through on the forward swing. If you do this, you're going to see the improvement right away. Hope this helps you. Still to come, one of our favorite things, a glorious night this season on parade. That's ahead and behind the headlines. I'm Jeffrey Heitman, NCH. This is my hospital. I'm Shona Vella McCunney, and this is my hospital. I'm Thomas Parent, and this is my hospital. My name is Kenneth Bookman, NCH. This is my hospital. NCH, this is my hospital. doesn't love chocolate. It came up time and time again when we ask people their favorite things. Norman Love is something they love. One of the nation's premier chocolatiers makes sweet treats in our own backyard. It was really important to me to um, not only express art, but that wow factor. It was so evident in the dining experience but didn't exist in confections. When you opened a box of chocolates, whether it was inexpensive or expensive, they always looked the same to me. So why couldn't I take some of the techniques that were used in decorating pastries and artistic centerpieces in the world of pastry and incorporate them into confections? My mother, grandmother were very active in the kitchen um, during family gatherings, holidays, and it was always this competitiveness amongst the aunts and the grandmothers, my mother and the dessert, and it made people happy. And it was a way to be artist, you know, to express art. I can remember second grade buying a book, the Betty Crocker's Boys and Girls Cookbook, and making recipes in second grade. I still have that book, and I think I knew my destiny at a very early age. But we began to make chocolates with a very clear vision ultra premium, handmade, all fresh ingredients, importing ingredients from all over the world. USA Today, two months after I started making chocolates and peddling them to friends that I knew in the hospitality industry from all my years in the hotel business. They named me the top 10 places to buy chocolates for Valentine's Day, January, late January 2002. And that really launched us into who we are today. So I know I was one of the first in the world to start with colors on chocolate. And today I'm so flattered to see and humbled to see so many chefs around the world that do this type of style of chocolates. And I truly believe that um, the, the focus of Norman Love Confections 15 years ago has never deviated. We've never compromised the integrity of what we do. We come to work every day to try to do something really right. We again, import all these fabulous ingredients. We make it entirely by hand. When we opened the company, I didn't know if Fort Myers or Naples was interested in an ultra premium chocolate product or pastry product. I really didn't. I was following a dream. And to think of how many people have come through our stores and enjoy the products that we produce is, it, it's more than, than, than humbling. It's, it's almost surreal. Considering the huge amount of time and money spent on video games, it has to be a much-loved activity for a lot of Americans. The USA Today's Mark Salzman has gift ideas for the gamers in your life. For gamers, it's the most wonderful time of the year, where many are racing to retail to scoop up some of the best video games of the year. Well, don't drive that fast, but hey everyone, I'm Mark Saltzman for USA Today's Surf Report. In this week's column, one of the last for 2016, I share some of my favorite video games of the year, divided into various ages, and here in this video, we're going to look at a few of them. A couple of action titles, a car racing sim, and let's start off with a stellar soccer game. 
If you're shopping for a footy fan, Pro Evolution Soccer 2017 by Konami kicks soccer games into high gear with its unmatched realism. That is, between the great graphics and smooth animation, accurate ball physics and responsive controls, and all the players, teams, and leagues that you want in a soccer game, Pez is easy to pick up but difficult to put down. Konami inked partnerships with the likes of FC Barcelona, Liverpool FC, UEFA, and CBF in Brazil, and all of the official kits, player faces, club logos, jerseys, stadiums, and chants are in the game. Everything you want. For the first time in a soccer game, the adaptive AI learns how you play, constantly analyzing playing styles, and looks to counter repeated playing patterns from the opponent. Pez 2017 is fun to play alone, with a friend beside you or online. And the game is available for multiple consoles and Windows PCs. Next up, one of my favorite shooters, Overwatch by Blizzard Entertainment. Dripping with character, Overwatch is a highly stylized team-based shooter set in the near future. Your team is made up of unique heroes like soldiers, scientists, and quirky characters, many of whom have their own powers and abilities to help you win these fast and frantic multiplayer showdowns on more than a dozen different large maps from around Earth. In fact, you can switch heroes mid-match and adapt to the ever-changing situation in the field. But it's all about working together to achieve victory as a team. Overwatch features multiple solo modes and online cooperative and competitive game types to test your skills in. Like a role-playing game, you'll level up and earn loot to dress up your fighters. Blizzard's Midas Touch continues with Overwatch, which is now available for Windows PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. All right, before we end off with car racing, one more great pick for sci-fi action fans, and that's Destiny, the collection from Bungie and Activision. Offering a ton of bang for your buck, and bang is right, Destiny the Collection, as the name suggests, contains every release to date from the award-winning first-person shooter franchise. If you haven't yet stepped into the boots of a Guardian, this collection includes Destiny, Expansion 1 The Dark Below, Expansion 2 House of Wolves, The Taken King, and the newest huge adventure Rise of Iron. This disc also includes a level 40 character boost to send you immediately into battles. The epic single-player campaign lets you explore explore a vast solar system, and you can join up with friends in three or six player co-op activities, engage in competitive multiplayer modes, and upgrade your character to create a unique and powerful hero. Destiny the Collection is available for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but be aware PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold is required for some features. All right, finally, it's time to burn asphalt with Forza Horizon 3 for Xbox One, Xbox One S, like this one here, and Windows PCs. The latest in this multiple award-winning car racing franchise has you in charge of the Horizon Festival, where you can customize everything, hire and fire your friends, and explore Australia from behind the wheel of more than 350 of the world's greatest cars, trucks, buggies, and other special vehicles. And yes, you heard correctly, more than 350 vehicles. That's 150 more than Forza Horizon 2. Not only is this the largest number of cars ever featured in a Forza Horizon game, it's the most diverse lineup yet, from supercars to modded urban racing favorites to off-roading trucks. With the new Horizon Blueprint feature, you can create and share your custom gameplay in a bunch of different events, set to great music and with heated multiplayer gameplay for online racing. Forza Horizon 3 plays as good as it looks, especially on the Xbox One S right here. It's 40% smaller than the original Xbox One and includes a built-in power supply, new Xbox wireless controller, up to two terabytes of storage and with different bundles available. Along with support for 4K and HDR enabled TVs, that's these new ultra high definition televisions with four times the resolution of HD and high dynamic range for better brightness, contrast and color, the new Xbox One S also has a built-in 4K Blu-ray player too. Xbox One S starts at $299. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I'm Mark Saltzman. Happy holidays and happy gaming. Among the things we all enjoy, a lighted boat parade has to be one of the holiday season's favorite events. The annual Naples boat parade is always a bright spot and this year didn't disappoint.
Only in Naples do you see a Christmas parade on boats at night with a few superheroes thrown in for good measure. The Naples Lighted Boat Parade has become quite the spectacle over the last 27 years. This year's outing featuring decked out luxury yachts and sailboats with Santas on board. Only this year Santa Claus had to share the spotlight with a few other costume characters. In keeping with the superheroes theme, 23 boats in all participated to the great joy of spectators enjoying the show from the sidelines. That does it for this edition of Behind the Headlines. Thank you for sharing your time with us. This is our last show of the year. We'll be back same time, same place on January 1. In the meantime, you can catch up on all of our episodes by logging on to NaplesNews.com. On the left-hand side, under a quick link, select Behind the Headlines. And you're always welcome to drop me a line or suggestion through my Facebook page. That's Amy Osher Reporter. We'll see you back here next year.